Today's episode of Inside Gaming Daily is brought to you by Stamps.com. To claim your special offer, go to Stamps.com, click the microphone at the top of the page, and type our code INSIDE. Hey everyone, welcome back to Inside Gaming for Monday. It's Monday, Hi. you know, hey, we gotta start the week off. Let's give us all a round of applause, it's Clap Monday. It's nice to, you know, get a little support now and then, it's good. So here's a nice story to kick off your week. Everyone loves Untitled Goose Game. It needs a name by now, right? Have we figured one out yet? So they were very explicit. They were very explicit about this. The title is not Untitled Goose Game. It is an Untitled Goose Game. So just so you guys know. Turns out there's a big market for people who just want to be a jerky goose who terrorizes children. That's what I've been waiting for for decades. It's weird that nobody thought of this before. To a degree, there's some Katamari vibes. You're just doing your thing and you go and destroy people's meaningless little lives. Just for- so the game has been getting attention for a while now, ever since a teaser first popped up back in 2017, and then that just grew as trailers were shown at big events like GDC. It's basically a puzzle game, but the premise is what sets it apart. You play as a surly goose who is terrorizing a nice, quaint little English town. After the build-up, the game finally arrived earlier this month on PC, Mac, and Switch, and it's gotten what every developer craves. Lots of mainstream media attention. It's the golden calf, right? Oh. Everybody wants to do it. No indie developer has budget to actually market it. Nobody can pay for an engine to play their damn game. So it's great to have a premise that succeeds on itself alone. So where have we seen coverage of this, Brian? Oh, like everywhere. We've seen coverage by NPR, uh, the LA Times, the New York Times, and none of these are exactly known for their video game coverage. So it's basically millions and millions of dollars of free publicity, which again is sort of the holy grail, especially for indie developers. It's really been one of those breakthrough games that gets some mainstream attention. You wanna talk about the holy grail? It's now made it all the way to Inside Gaming. So the New York Times described its charm this way, quote, with absolutely nothing at stake, no world to save, no baddies to fight, the pleasure of the gameplay comes from the bothering of townsfolk, chasing frightened children, stealing from shopkeepers, and honking incessantly at people trying to read. Yeah, there's a honk button. Uh, even better, celebrities are shouting it out, which yeah, shouldn't matter in an ideal world, but it's a kind of marketing that games indie or not would all kill for. The model Chrissy Teigen mentioned that she wanted the game, but had to wait for her husband, John Legend, to get home and download it. Boy, we've all been there, huh? That's just Come relationship. Stuff. Stephanie got mad that I watched a movie without her. I, I watched Infinity War with you guys at the office and she was pissed. Man, a regular Jack and Jill, you two. <laughs> I want to say I have more of a Pete Hines and Kate Beckinsale thing going on. Is that his name? Pete Hines? What's his name? Davidson. 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 Who's Pete oh, Hines? No, no. Oh. <laughs> I was like the guy from Bethesda's f***ing Kate, Kate Beckinsale. Hines. That's Who's awesome. Pete, guys? He keeps getting specials for some reason. Isn't that Pete Holmes? Oh. Who's Pete Hines? <laughs> Will Hines is a comedian. This was important. Who makes the ketchup? The Untitled Goose Game also got a shout out by, of all people, Blink-182 during a concert. Yes! With Mark Hoppus, the bassist, saying how much he liked it. We got a new Blink-182 album and they're they're throwing out cool indie games, man. Is that a stamp of approval 2019? 2019 suddenly turned around. Two President's threatening civil war, but everything's fine. Uh, Mines is the vice president of Bethesda. He's like my face. That's it! And Jeff Ramos of Polygon put out a new version of the game's trailer to a Lizzo song with the lyric, blame it on a goose. Like most things associated with the game, it went viral. Meanwhile, it's getting the meme treatment, right, yes. Brian? Oh yeah, the goose has been popping up all over. People have been photoshopping it into Breath of the Wild, Animal Crossing, and my favorite, the climactic scene from Final Fantasy VII. That's oh, the spoiler. Best. Come on, the game's yeah. coming out next Remake. month. Come on, dog. I didn't spoil it. I said it was climactic. There's a lot of places she could have put that holy material where uh, Sephiroth couldn't find it. I'm just saying. And with all great things in the world, there's already a call. We can't tell if this is a joke or not. To add the goose to Smash Ultimate. Waluigi, you'll have to wait. Everyone's Waluigi. shoving Waluigi to the back. And we got Woody from Toy Story. He's it. <laughs> Clippy from uh, Microsoft Word. <laughs> Looks like you're trying to play a fighting game. So yeah, we haven't seen sales numbers for Untitled Goose Game yet, but it's been hanging around the top of Nintendo's eShop since it released, which is always a great sign. It even bumped the Link's Awakening remake from the top of the Australian charts. Ooh. That's tell you something. On PC, it's currently only on the Epic Game Store, so we're not sure how well it's selling, and probably never will. And if we're playing this one by the numbers, here's the Inside Gaming prediction. Publisher Panic will release a statement saying the game outperformed all of their others on PC, and then people on Reddit and 4chan will do calculus level math to try and prove that it actually didn't sell well on the Epic Game Store after all. Seriously, if you guys voted half the time to anything else that you did trying to prove that Borderlands 3 didn't sell on PC, boy, this world would be in a better spot. Oh, did that we happen? would solve climate change in a, like a day. What is the secret of the game's success? Like we said, it's a unique concept for a game, but also it's just harmless fun. Mm. Nobody gets murdered, but you still get to indulge in the dark fantasy of just being a dick for a few hours. Yeah, as Brian Altano of IGN described it, it's like a jovial, harmless version of Grand Theft Auto, but instead of killing random people as a man, you bother and slightly inconvenience them as a goose. And during these days of 
super bleak headlines every single day. It's kind of a nice welcome break, which is really what video games should be and what you want them to be. Yeah, we're kind of mired in an age of cynicism right now. It makes sense. There's a lot to be disenfranchised about with life. So it is nice to kind of gather hands and celebrate something that's innocent, dumb, and fun, like just an ass of a goose going around and honking at people. <laughs> the game was made by an Australian developer called House House, which uh, consists of a grand total of four people. And even if you add in the other people who contributed on things like music, sound design, as well as additional art and programming and voice actors, it looks like less than 20 people in total were involved in making this game. It's very weird to get to the end of a game like that and have the credits like go mm -hmm. and then stop. Yeah, you check your phone, you look up, it's done. Now, what? You see the Ubisoft like two hours of credits from all the worldwide studios kind of <laughs> Like Shanghai, <laughs> Antarctica. Where did this game come from, Brian? So Jacob Strausser of House House gave an interview and he said it actually started when a colleague put a picture of a goose into their office Slack chat and everyone agreed that geese were very funny. So apparently you can start a hit game through Slack and not just, I don't know, share memes or complain about things. That actual conversation is great to read because it is about as pure as the actual game ended up being. Yeah. Which is like somebody just posted a picture of a goose and they're like, let's discuss this. And then people are like, geese are very funny. There are only two colors. That that's good. They have a pointy tail. That's also a good thing. They have dumb feet. Just like mathematically breaking down why geese are just dumb little animals. Make it isometric, slap a done sticker on it, and make your millions. <laughs> what other games have they worked on, Brian? Well, they had just finished up another game. It was kind of a multiplayer friendship slash wrestling game, from what I could tell, called Push Me, Pull You. But uh, going forward, they wanted to make a single player game in 3D. And so I guess they kind of settled on the idea of a goose protagonist. And as you can see, it was an inspired choice. So Strausser told Vulture, we very quickly realized that the low level relationship between a goose and person was really interesting and really rich and had all this opportunity for depth and nuance and humor. So far, it definitely looks like the Untitled Goose game could join the ranks of indie hits. It's got the momentum. Mm. It's got that like broad appeal. There's been a couple of other games that have done this, which is why we're not throwing that out of nowhere. So we've been seeing these kinds of breakouts for years now, thanks to the growth of digital distribution and game making tools that are cheap or sometimes free. Sometimes a game concept can just blow up and kind of take over people's consciousnesses. That has actually created an ecosystem of indie games from tiny studios that otherwise would never really see the light of day. Yeah, now one of my favorite things is we just get to shout out a ton of awesome indie games. Hollow Knight was a similar story. It was a Kickstarter game made by a Team Cherry, a group of three people in Australia who said they bonded over their love for Zelda 2. It is now regarded as one of the best Metrovanias of all time and sold more than 2.8 million copies as of earlier this year. Good for them. So much. The game is gorgeous, it's, beautiful, yeah. and it's a lot of fun to play. It's so good. I really hope they can ride that momentum and I'm just really excited to see what they make. Next, more examples though. Stardew Valley was a farming simulator inspired by the Harvest Moon series and it was made by one guy, oh Eric Baron, over the course of several years. People loved it and it sold more than 3.5 million copies by the end of 2017. Oh my God. Very similar story for other games like World of Goo, Undertale, Celeste, and Cuphead, the brutal platformer with the 1930s animated style. So Cuphead is one of those interesting ones where most games like this, Sayonara Wild Hearts, kind of same thing, where for a mass market thing, you typically don't want to make it super video game hard, but man, Cuphead super was. It was kind of an interesting dynamic. A lot of people were captivated by the art style and the music, but mm -hmm. a lot of people really couldn't hang with how difficult that game was. It was a hard game. So that studio, Studio Moldenhauer, announced yesterday on Cuphead's two year anniversary that it sold five million copies. That's a lot for a very difficult 2D platformer. Mm -hmm. So what do all these games have in common? Well, most importantly, they're well made and they're fun to play. That's pretty pretty simple. Yeah. Right? yeah. They're also usually not a full price $60 game. They usually sell for around 20 bucks or less. And they don't have a microtransactions. Okay. Some of those games have a lot of DLC, like Hollow Knight does. It's pretty honest content. You yeah. just get a chunk of new stuff and get to play yeah, it. Yeah, I think that also comes with just paying for the base game. They just keep rolling it out. Yeah, and those are all Kickstarter goals. With the hope that you're gonna play their sequel, which of course I will. Yeah, so, absolutely. Yeah. But also the concepts are usually considered weird, like Untitled Goose Game, or from genres that large developers ignore, like Stardew Valley. It's hard to imagine a major studio giving a green light to a game starring an asshole goose or an animated cup that looks like it's from the Great Depression. <laughs> but that's also what makes indie games great. They can be cool little niche games that aren't really that expensive or very long to play, but then they end up finding a larger audience, mm -hmm. usually through the internet. Yeah, it's almost like the Wii effect. Nintendo's very good at this about making a game or a game peripheral that somehow punctures the populist concept of what a game is. It's not just some dude with a controller with a million buttons just ratty tatting out. Now you're just like shoving a ring between your thighs and squeezing out a baby in video game form. What? So indie devs also end up forging a bond with their supporters. We see a lot of these games get updated repeatedly over the years with DLC, and a lot of the times it's free, which can, you know, cut both ways, as Shovel Knight can prove. Yeah, 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 the developer Shovel Knight, which came out back in 2013, recently said that they're finally done with the game after releasing a bunch of updates that include multiple campaigns and even a multiplayer fighting game. Not something you'd see from a big AAA publisher, but again, that's the beauty of indies. I know we're painting a really beautiful picture here, but not every indie game becomes a hit. In fact, most don't, right, Brian? Yeah, indie 
think uh, Mike Rose recently dug into a whole month of Steam sales. He just looked at the month of July and discovered that the average game on Steam makes just $16,000 in revenue its first year off 1,500 copies sold. So most of these aren't breakout hits. In fact, it's just a small, small fraction of a percent that get all the headlines like Goose Game. Hentai Jigsaw 5. It's my favorite. Oh dear God. So that number is actually down from last year where the average game sold 5,000 copies and made $30,000 a year. So yeah, very hard for games without big marketing budgets to get noticed. Yeah, so maybe pump the brakes on these untitled these Nuts Jokes games. I refuse. Never, uh, I will never. Good. Okay. But in the case of Untitled Goose Game, it's really cool when a weird indie game breaks through and gets the attention of Blink-182. Yeah, and we're trying our best here, by the way. This is a weird like peek under the curtain thing. We could have run a number of more negative leaning stories today. Brian wanted to celebrate a cool game and I agreed, so we're trying to do our part, be positive here, celebrate good stuff. So if this gets no views, you have your evidence. Negativity works on YouTube. If you want to be positive, be positive with us. Unless it doesn't work, and then we're gonna go back to, to yelling at publishers for selling DLC or something. Back to the neg. What is that? What is Anthem up to? Today's episode of Inside Gaming Daily is brought to you by Stamps.com because with that mountain of excellent indie games sitting on your lap waiting to be played, you can't spend time driving to the post office waiting in line like a chump. People who beat Untitled Goose Game aren't sitting in line at the office, they're at home, doing, doing their stuff, taking care of their effects, wrapping their business up, making that money, and funneling it right back into indie games, being a good little indie gamer. Uh, Stamps.com can help you beat indie games, there I said it. Uh, with Stamps.com you get five cents off every first class stamp and 40% off priority mail. Not to mention it's a fraction of the cost of those expensive postage meters it's a no-brainer. Saves you time and money. It's no wonder over 700,000 small businesses already use stamps.com. That could be you. You're in the business of beating cool indie games, and we want business to be good, which is why you need to go to stamps.com. You can use your computer to print official U.S. postage 24-7 for any letter, any package, any class of mail, anywhere you want to send it. Once your mail is ready, just hand it to your mail carrier or drop it in the mailbox. It's that simple. And we've got a bonus offer for you guys right now. You can get a four week free trial, free postage, and a free digital scale without any long-term commitment. You just gotta go to stamps.com, click the microphone at the top of the page, and use our code INSIDE, that's I-N-S-I-D-E. Once more, that's stamps.com, mic at the top, code INSIDE. That's four week free trial, free postage, and a free digital scale. You can measure whatever you want, anything. It's all, it's all up to you. Uh, so thank you, stamps.com, for the sponsorship, and thank you for supporting indie games by using stamps.com. Weird connection, but I made it somehow. He's eat later this year. Well, that just sounds adorable, heartwarming. It just touches me right here. Who could ever be upset at a game like this? So cute. There's no reason. Well, I got four words for you. Epic Game Store exclusive. Mm, yeah, that makes sense then. So the whole mess started last week when designer Ben Wasser posted the news about the exclusivity deal on the 